over there. I see you struggling with the number, but don't have no fear, cause I'm right here. We're gonna grow and learn together, there's no need to despair. My cool light breeze, I'm gonna learn it with ease. So leave your content because I've time to learn. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at how to solve this problem known as the magic triangle. And here's what it is. So the objective is to fill in the circles with numbers from 1 to 6 so that each side has the same sum. Now this is a type of problem that I encourage young students to practice um, and I'll definitely be including a lot of similar problems and brain teaser similar challenges as we move on i'll try to include at least one in every volume it's important for students to see how different concepts can be applied to questions that we may not necessarily see every day in a classroom and that will help to improve their problem solving skills specifically this challenge relies heavily on knowing addition which we covered in uh, the first volume so that's why I felt that this was a great way to start so because this problem is a little different I have sort of a step-by-step -step rule right the first thing is we need to understand the problem so we have to write down everything that we know the next is to plan a strategy and then finally you execute so you follow the plan so let's begin by listing out everything we know and I mean everything doesn't matter how simple it seems, we're going to list it all out. So let's start. Number one, there are six circles. Number two, each line is made up of three circles, so each sum is made up of three numbers. Number three, the numbers have to be from one to six. Number four, the numbers cannot be repeated. Number five, there are three sums. Number six, the sums all have to be the same. So the sums have to be equal. So you see how much things we can write down just by looking at the problem itself. So here's my plan, right? I'm going to start with a random number in a random place. Then I'm going to add two numbers to it. Then I'm going to find the sum of those three numbers. And then finally, I'm going to fill in the other numbers so that I'll be able to match the sum of my first three. And hopefully if I'm lucky, I'll be able to solve. So let's go. Um, I'm going to start here and I am going to place one. Right. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add six here and then four here. Right, so I'll be pretty lucky if I got this on my first try and I can always go back and retry using the same method but let me see if I can figure out anything um, okay so my f so the sum of the these three numbers right would be 6 plus 1 plus 4 which is 11 all right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add I'm going to add 2 here, so 4 plus 2 is 6, so I need to add 5 here to make it 11 as well. So I have 11 on these two sides. And now for my last line, I have 6 plus 5, which is 11. So that makes no sense because I have an empty slot and I've already made the sum. Um, okay, so that doesn't, so that won't work. All right. Yeah, so I think I'd be pretty lucky if I just got it on my first try just by just guessing randomly. Um, so let's see if I can figure out anything else that could help me further, right? Sometimes when problems are given like this, there are hidden facts that you can use. Now, from these numbers, the lowest possible sum I could find would be from adding the three lowest numbers, right? So that's 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. On the other hand, the highest possible sum would come from 4 plus 5 plus 6, and that's 15. So what this is telling me is that I want to avoid using 6 or 15 as my sums because that would make it really hard for me to match it using any of the other two lines. 
and actually what i probably should go for is trying to get a number that's in between so a number that kind of falls in the middle between 6 and 15 and that can be any number between i would say 8 to 12. So what that tells me is that my first attempt, which was finding a sum of 11, was probably along the same lines. So instead of starting all the way over, I'm just going to go back and readjust. So by going back here, I'm going to interchange. So going back, I'm going to change my 2 with 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9, which means that I need 2 to make it 11. And then finally... 6 plus 2 is 8 so that means I need 3 to make it 11 did I solve it looks like I did awesome okay so I was able to solve this puzzle on my second attempt now I'm not gonna lie this isn't my first time doing this puzzle I actually did it before because I wanted to see how simple it would be to solve However, this is the exact process I went through when I solved it for the first time. So now you guys get to see a glimpse of what the problem solving process looks like from my perspective. There was no hard math involved. I didn't start out with the best strategy, but I made sure to fully understand the problem first and then update my strategy by discovering new facts related to the problem as I went along. No, I did not spoil the fun because there isn't just one solution to this puzzle. Now it's your turn to try and solve the magic triangle by using either an entirely different sum or by using different number combinations. Be sure to comment the solution that you came up with down below and if there are any other hidden facts that you discovered while trying to solve the puzzle, let me know. As usual, like, comment, share and subscribe. This puzzle requires doing addition and subtraction, so if you're new to this channel or you need a refresher on addition or subtraction, then be sure to check out my addition and subtraction series by clicking the link in the description. Join me next week for another interesting video, but until then, remember we're all in this together because math is life.